Hey, Lauren. She's calling. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, when um, Mr. Uh, Councilman Flanagan comes in, will he be in? Will he get into the session? Yes. So I've reset everybody's uh, links this morning. Okay. So let me send out an email. No, real no, quick, I just, just got. I just wanted to make sure that when if he comes in a little late, that he gets right. Yeah, I'm going to see if they're running late or not. And David, you can go and just start while we wait for people to attend. Okay. Good morning, everybody. This is David Waddell with the uh, Texas Restaurant Association. I'm the regional executive director in Austin. Certainly want to welcome you and, and our visitors today, and certainly our special guests that are Mayor Price from Fort Worth and um, Brad Smith from Austin, and Jimmy Flanagan has just joined us. So. Just give us a couple more minutes and, and we'll start this off. And again, uh, for everybody, welcome. Welcome to uh, TRA 2020 virtual. So uh, again, Mayor Price and, and Brad and, and, and Jimmy, thank you so much for, for jumping on. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Glad to be here. Jimmy, can you hear us okay? Or? Yeah, coming in loud and clear. Okay, good, good, good. I know you were on one, one Zoom already and one meeting and rushed over, so we appreciate that. that that's the life, right, Mayor Price? We live on Zoom. <laughs> Zoom, Web, WebEx, and Skype, and go to meeting. Yeah. And Teams, we use a lot of Teams oh, in Austin. We, we use a lot of Teams too. I forgot about Teams. <laughs> yeah, it's jumping from platform to platform, just boom, boom, boom. Yep. And the technology works most of the time. <laughs> most being the operative word. We had a um, we had a Zoom meeting with the ferry. Yesterday was my birthday, so we had a Our Zoom birthday. Meeting. So our 85 year old mother, we go through this every time she tries to get on and you know, it's, if we're supposed to be on for an hour, 45 minutes is trying to get her to show how to, how to do this. And then she gets flustered and said, Ma, it's not that important, not that important. we're good, we're good. So let, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and start and again. Thank you, welcome everybody. Uh, Mayor Price and Brad and, and, and Jimmy Flanagan. Um, again, good morning, my name is David Waddell and I'm the regional executive director for TRA. Uh, you know, thank, thank you for joining us this morning for the PAC, bringing back Texas tourism. Um, before we begin our discussion, I have a couple of uh, quick housekeeping items. The first is please feel free to engage throughout this session by asking questions uh, using the chat window below. I'll monitor those throughout this, uh, the session and then hopefully we can get you all in. Second, I want to make sure that we welcome and thank our Pack Lounge stage sponsors, which is Marsh, Marsh Wortham and Monty and Ramirez LLP for making this session possible by sp being our sponsors. Uh, now to kick it off, I wanted to introduce our very special guest. And again, I can't thank, we cannot thank them enough for, for being here. Uh, I'm going to do things a little different today. I've, I've kind of asked the our, our guests to talk a little bit about themselves instead of me being boring and right reading their their bio so first uh the honorable betsy price the 44th mayor of fort worth welcome again mayor so why don't you get talk to us thank you david welcome everybody i wish we could be in person i mean we were having a discussion earlier about being people people and i really miss that i'll just give you a real quick i hate formal bios i usually just tell people to say this is the craziest lady you know and here she is here's betsy so which fits pretty well i uh, have been mayor of fort worth for nearly 10 years now at the end of may it'll be 10 years and i'm fort worth's longest serving mayor i'm a native of fort worth i was tax assessor for 11 years before that before that i owned a small business and truly our restaurant owners our small business owners are the backbone of what we do fort worth's now the 13th largest city in the nation and rapidly growing and we need this virus to just go away so we can all get back to business i'm thrilled to be with you today thank you mayor brad smith how about yourself 
Well, good morning, David, and everybody listening. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'll um, echo what Mayor Price said. The, this time is so difficult because the travel and hospitality industry is such a people industry. It's a time when we want to be together and promote and market people getting together. So um, it is a tough time, and I can't wait till we get back to that. But I've had the pleasure over the last 25 years to work in the travel and hospitality industry and have worked as the program director of the Travel Texas program and the Texas Economic Development and Tourism Division for over the last 10 years. And um, it's just a great honor for myself and my team to be promoting Texas both domestically and around the world. Thank you. Councilman Flanagan. Thank you, David. Uh, my name is Jimmy Flanagan. I'm on the Austin City Council. I'm nearing the end of my first term. I'll be on the ballot this November. Uh, on, on the City Council in Austin, uh, I think it's fair to say I have been the biggest champion for tourism and for small businesses amongst my colleagues. And I, and I love my fellow council members and Mayor Adler, but uh, you know, my background is small business. I built websites for 20 years, many websites for local restaurants in Austin during that time. And so it's, it's, you know, that type of work and the type of, of industry collaboration. I used to run the LGBT Chamber of Commerce before I was a council member. So this type of, of organizing and the work the TRA does is so important. It's so important to our communities, our small businesses, our quality of life, and for all of the customers of your patron restaurants who, who seek your venues to get together with friends and, and enjoy their lives. Enjoy the amazing city that Austin is, the amazing city that Fort Worth is. Uh, and, all, and all of our Texas cities. I also serve in Austin at a regional level. I chair the Regional Economic Development Board and, and through, the, through the Council of Governments. And so I'm also thinking about beyond the borders of just the city of Austin, because the district that I represent, the far northwest corner of the city of Austin, folks are coming in and out of the city limits all the time, going to restaurants in Round Rock, going to restaurants in Cedar Park, and vice versa, those folks coming into the city. And so this, the, you know, the, the restaurant industry and tourism is absolutely critical, both for our municipal budgets, but also for the quality of life for our, for our restaurants and our small businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. I was, before you got out, I was telling Mayor Price that I used to, before I got into the Texas Restaurant Association, which is one of those jobs you can't <clears throat> wait to wake up in the morning to go to. And I, I, I see that passion in the three of you, uh, but uh, the, the church that I worked for the, at before I joined TRA was called the Potter's House, Bishop T.D. Jakes. And he had a saying that said, um, everybody wants to be there when the cake gets baked, but nobody wants to be there to grind the flour. And what, what impresses me about the three of you is you guys are there to grind the flour. You're there every day trying to make tourism, um, you know, through this horrid pandemic um, to, to come through because you know that's the first thing kind of that's going to go. So. Brad, the one thing that I was interested in, and I want you to talk a little bit about it, is uh, this initiative that you've started, um, your, vi your, visit your visitor's pledge to travel safety. That, that seems like it's a great way to start it off. Yeah, David. Um, well, we know peop some people are out exploring, and while we continue to keep people engaged with the Texas travel product and experience, and keep them inspired and keeping Texas top of mind for future trips and as they dream about future trips. We just want to make sure that um, with the pledge that we're reminding Texans and other travelers to be committed to safe and responsible travel uh, as they get around the state and that they respect the people and places that they go visit just like they would their own home. And um, we hope that um, by providing this travel pledge and promoting it through our channels and through PR, that we can really help move the industry along as people either are traveling now or as they plan to travel in the future, as they feel the time is right for them to travel, that they do so responsibly and that, that our, the many sectors of the travel industry can continue to rebound and that we can do it safely. That's great, that's great. You know, the one thing that really touched me was when, when I heard about that and read about it is that, you know, we have the Texas promise, restaurant promise, which is basically the same thing. There's responsibility on both parts to make this work. And, you know, our restaurant tours are some of the hardest working people, 
you know, that we, you know, I think all of us at one point maybe worked for a restaurant or, or something. Like that. My first job um, was working at a, a company called Steak and Brew. That's when you had all the beer you could drink and all the salad bar you could bring it back. I'm from back east, but, um, and I still say one of the hardest jobs I ever had was working at the old kind of McDonald's where you were there until three or four o'clock in the morning cleaning up. And that was difficult. So your initiative uh, sounds like ex exactly what we need. And hopefully, you know, we can pair together in terms of what we're trying to do with the restaurant tours. Mayor Price, you're a leader. You're, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a leader in your industry and leader for Fort Worth. So with this pandemic going on, tell me some of the things as far as tourism that you've had to deal with. You know, I know you've got budgetary issues going through, but, you know, tourism is big in, in, in Fort Worth stockyards and everything? Tourism is huge in Fort Worth and we just opened in uh, last November the new Dickies Arena, our state-of-the-art arena to seat 14,000, 15, nearly 15,000 people. Of course it's shut down now. Just the pandemic just really changed the way we think about business. When we went through the shutdown in early March that shut all the restaurants down, the bars are still shut down, the arenas, we had horse shows booked, we had uh, the Bass Hall performances booked. We had to come together and say, what impact is this going to have on us and what impact long term we do and how are we going to help our small businesses? And I met with the independent retail uh, restaurant associations two or three times here. Some of them have come up with some of the most innovative and creative ideas. We came up with ways to try to help them sell that. Uh, our Visit Fort Worth came up with a reopen Fort Worth safely badge, restaurants can qualify. It was driven by a group we call CORE, which is made up of two of my council members and volunteers throughout the city. We're now in the middle of a y'all wear a mask campaign. It's mm. Texas, remember? You got oh, yeah, y'all. Yeah. And I always open all mine with howdy y'all anyway, so it fits and it's, we've spread it out. And as Jimmy said, it's a big region and people, tourism, mm -hmm isn't just about coming to Fort Worth. It's coming to Fort Worth and going to Arlington. It's coming to Fort Worth and staying in Fort Worth, but going to Dallas to visit Dallas. Of course, you know, I don't want them to stay in Dallas, I want them to stay here. But most of our hotels were set, shut down. So we have a drive time campaign going now that we're beginning to reopen a little bit. We've worked closely with Visit Fort Worth. There's just a lot going on, but it's a strange time. I've been incredibly proud of the innovation that's come out of all these businesses and the fact that the city has taken our CARES dollars and been able to put millions of dollars in to not loans, but grants to help our small businesses get back on their feet. And our restaurant owners have been really good about helping us identify small businesses, not just themselves, but others who can make those applications and work. So there's an awful lot of efforts going towards helping restaurants and entertainment people get out of this ditch. Great. I was in uh, Fort Worth. Uh, we had a meeting there about two weeks ago. Our CEO, Emily Knight, was there, and we talked to some restaurateurs, our, our, our members, some of our members in um, Fort Worth. And I tell you, the, the passion and the can do, and we're going to get through this, and this is not going to be this, just unbelievable. And there's some really hardworking people. I mean, they, they've been in this, or, you know, this. Um, this industry all their life, and they're not about to let this go. So uh, they seem to echo uh, your personality and your grit, too. So that's that's a great thing to see. That's a um, good term for Fort Worth, and we've got grit. Yes, de definitely, grit. definitely. Uh, I call you Mr. Flanagan because I am, you know, so our offices are in Austin, and uh, there's a couple of restaurant tours that just love you and always bring up your name. So this is a blessing to be all of you, but certainly you, I was, I was tired of hearing your name and not meet you. But, um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that impressed me is all the leadership um, skills you have and initiatives. So what were some of the things that you've learned about yourself with this pandemic as it relates to tourism and how to get people back into tourism? And then also, I know you have a a love and an, an adoration for restaurant tours or in restaurants. How, what, what did you learn about yourself on this? You know, I think we're all learning a lot about what really matters and what parts of our cities and our economies were far more fragile than we anticipated. 
you know, th there's a lot of ecosystem and interconnectivity between businesses, tourism, restaurants, the community. And the disruption that we're seeing from the pandemic, I think, is teaching all of us a lot about where the weak points are in those systems. You know, in Austin, a big part of our tourism industry is, is major events, South by Southwest, Austin City Limits, UT football games, that kind of stuff. And, you know, they've obviously all been disrupted. I still think Mayor Adler's decision to cancel South by Southwest way back in March was one of the, the most critical decisions globally that, that we all needed to take this seriously. And, and I'm proud to have supported him in that effort. Um, you know, what I've learned is that in a crisis, folks generally and understandably think about their own preservation and their families and their and their 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 ecosystem their bubble but when you're a council member when you're a mayor when you're in in public office you can't do that mm -hmm. you have to think bigger and what it means is all the people you normally work with the community members that are battering ideas around with you that are sending you oh you should do this oh you should do that suddenly their emails sound very different and and it really does take leadership from your elected officials to kind of rise above the, the, the individual issues and think about the systemic problem. Austin was moving pretty quickly. I, I wrote the first resolution right after South by was canceled to kick off a process to help our music venues. Um, you know, in Austin, that's a big part of our tourism industry as well, live music. And there's arguably nobody hit harder than our live music venues during this time. I think restaurants are a very close second, like right, right there, but the music venues especially, they got no other thing they can do. Yeah. Which is, yeah. which is really hard. Um, and, and ultimately, the program that we created to use COVID dollars to help local businesses, Mayor Price, we were watching you guys in Fort Worth and, and uh, in an homage, stole some of your ideas, uh, as we often do as municipal leaders, share ideas back and forth. Um, but it was ultimately a small business program that I came up with out of my own head and wrote the resolution, and two weeks later, we created it. Sometimes in local government, it does happen that way. And, and in a crisis, it does take real leadership to move stuff forward at the speed at which we need to move stuff forward now. Brad, let me ask you more quick. How, how do you think restaurateurs, who probably most of our um, crowd today, our audience today, how can we work with a tourism group like yourself to get over this hump? Now, this is, this is a huge hump. We all know that. And there's a lot of parts to it. But given your experience and the initiative that you're, you're bringing out, how, how can we work together uh, to make both of our lives easier and, and get to the next level? Um, that's a good question. Um, I know that I think one of the things we've learned through this is that we're all in this together, right? And we have to find a way, we have to work together to find ways to um, support each other, to make the whole economy better. And um, as we, the, one of the main things that people do when they travel, of course, is they go out and eat. It's, you know, culinary is one of the main drivers of tourism. People have to eat, of course, when they're all the time when they travel. So, but visiting places because of unique foods, um, the unique flavors of a destination are what bring people to so many destinations. In Texas, we're so well known for our great barbecue and Tex-Mex and all those great things that people can't get in other places. Um, but we also have these great culinary scenes that are in our major urban centers that are really generating just wonderful contemporary modern Texas world cuisine um, that's acknowledged by, you know, all over the world and all over the United States. And people come here for all those types of food. And I think working with the local destination marketing organizations, working with the cities, and as we move through this process of COVID and in, in all the phases that we're gonna go through until there is a pandemic that's widely distributed, um, I think it's really gonna take restaurants working closely with their city officials, with their destination marketing organizations and, and working in partnership to find ways to promote a destination um, and, and provide a safe environment. Safety is really going to be a the defining factor in where people choose to go in the future and at least the near future right so um, providing a safe dining experience providing a safe experience for the consumer when they come to your city 
um, pe that's where people are going to choose to go where, you know, it's not going to be what's the cheapest or the best value. People are going to really be relying on destinations and their partners in the restaurant industry, the hotel industry, all sectors of the travel industry to be providing a safe experience for themselves and their family. Thank you. You know, it's interesting, the, phone, the, the, the calls that we get, of, of course, it's about the government and loans and, and things like that. Um, and I'm going to come to you, Mayor Price, here in a second. But what, what's interesting, you know, you've got the PPP loans and the PPE, the equipment and things like that, and people losing their jobs. But what's interesting is people calling the restaurant association and saying, I just visited this restaurant. It was one of my favorites. They're doing this. Uh, are they supposed to be doing it like this? They don't want to tattletale, but they want to make sure, to your point, Brad, safety is key. And I'll tell you what, I've been just so impressed with the local restaurateurs, you know, in Austin, but around, the, you know, the country and specifically Texas, as how they've been able to pivot and be very creative in, in, in how they go to, to market. So, Brad, anytime someone calls, we'll make sure we'll, we'll try to definitely partner with you guys, because I think you have a lot of great ideas and, and certainly you know, we've done some great things too. So yeah, I think the Texas restaurant promise is, is a great thing. We promote yeah. it on our website along with what the right. hotel industry is doing. And just to try and show to consumers who are who are looking at our website and planning future travel to Texas that Texas is a safe place and then all the procedures and protocols that are being taken um, into account and put in place by the restaurants and the hotels and the attractions across the state. And I think part of, to Brad's part about communicating, one thing that our restaurants have done that has just been incredible, Visit Fort Worth helped them. So many of our small restaurants didn't have robust websites or really didn't have good Facebook. And they have to in today's world because people are pickier. They're looking more on social media, looking on the internet for resources to find out what restaurants are safe, who's doing what, who's following the guideline, who's earned the badge for reopen Fort Worth or your better restaurant association. And so they've all come together, to pool their resources and, and have some IT folks helping some of these smaller ones get their resources up so that people can find them. Because you know, many of our restaurants are small mom and pop type in a neighborhood They get Visit Fort Worth knows them and they recommend them by word of mouth when somebody comes in the bureau but if they're not on, nowadays, if they're not on social media, they just won't make it. You know, that's, that's a great plug. We have a the Texas restaurant certification program where these restaurants can now go and get certified and, and put that sticker on their window and say, we've been through this in terms of safety and the, the whole new, the, no, the whole new world of doing things. So I would encourage everybody, all the restaurateurs and, and, and folks that, that you can talk to, um, uh, and tell them about the Texas Restaurant Certification Program. It's on our website. Uh, the three of you, two of you represent a small college football team in, in Austin. And then, Mary, you've got a little team there in, uh, uh, in, in Fort Worth. How, how do you feel? You know, we'll talk about football here, but in terms of tourism, tailgating is now, you know, for this year is, is gone. Uh, I saw UT, the crowds are going to be 25%. But how, how will that directly, indirectly affect tourism? And do you guys agree with the decision? And, and, and that's a hard question. And I know it's not up to us to make those decisions. But, you know, I, was, I just wanted to know what your thoughts on, you know, the, the socialization, if you will, of uh, the fall and football seasons on tourism. It definitely has changed because that's a, I mean, this weekend, as you know, Jimmy and Austin was move in for the college kids. And generally the whole city is a buzz with those kids from all the retail places, the restaurants and their parents. And while we saw some of that this weekend, last weekend and this weekend for move in, it was much quieter than normal. And it's gonna be, the it's fall is a big deal. I mean, tailgating at TCU is a big deal. West Texas Wesleyan has a football team. There's just always a lot of activity around that and the tailgate parties draw thousands of people. I will tell you that while they've been stopped, I live in the TCU neighborhood and they will, there will be a whole lot more backyard tailgating and then people will walk to the stadium. It isn't going away completely because it's a huge part of what we do. It's a huge part of socialization for the young folks coming in. 
it's disappointing, but it's, it's really the right thing to do because you start getting those crowds, particularly among that 18 to 40 age group. That's where we saw the big spread after Memorial Day. So I think it's the right thing to do. I think everybody's going to figure out a new norm. Some of our restaurants are already beginning to advertise picnic packages in mm -hmm. lieu of tailgating that people can pick up and have with their friends at their house, in their front yard, their backyard, or wherever they want to be, and then go to the game from there. And the crowds will be much limited, but you can watch them on TV and enjoy with your family um, a takeout food that's mm -hmm. more that tailgate style. You know, uh, innovative and creative ways to address it. Yeah, our, uh, Emily, our, our CEO, she you know she lives off Lake, and she's been to a couple of restaurants in in, in Fort Worth. She says, "I just go just to be around there to support." But she goes, "The thing was, it just we've we've missed that, you yeah. know." And 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 I think Brad hit on it in terms of tourism is about food too. It's you know. People go out of town. The first thing they take a picture of is what they're eating and the and the and the, the cocktail that they're drinking. So you know we we've got to get back to that. Uh, kind of funny. I'm looking at the questions and they're going, "Dad, going." I got one. Dad, going. And everything I wanted to ask, you guys have answered. So I, I appreciate well, that. If so, I can uh, respond to that question too, David. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I was I was in the marching band. I was in Longhorn Band, uh, and I have every year since I graduated marched alumni band. Mm. Uh, I put on a put on a tuba and I march a halftime show every year and I've done it for 20 years since I graduated and I won't be able to do that this year wow. and it just stinks it stinks left right center up and down it just stinks but as Mayor Price said it's the right decision and you know I a lot of us are still concerned about you know how do you still safely operate a hundred thousand seat stadium at 25 percent yeah because there's still only so many entrances and exits. It's, there's still that. Um, but because it's a state institution, you know, the city's guidance is just guidance. They, they have the ability to take the actions they want to take. It absolutely will have an impact on restaurants, will absolutely have an impact on hotels. Um, but I mean, what isn't having that impact right now? And, and I think, you know, you, you mentioned one example, David, and I think it's really good. You know, these are what, what I love about working with restaurants and small business owners is the constant spirit of innovation and the ability to find new ways to serve your customers and to, to, to support your employees and, and doing everything you can to keep folks employed in a very difficult time. And, and I think, you know, we're going to get through this, but it, you know, it's, it's not tomorrow. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's still happening. It's for the if long run. Round up your friends and, and do a virtual concert your alumna friends. One of our friends is doing a parade with three other former TCU band members up and down his street. They all live on the same street. So the three oh, of them are going to play and march down the street. That, that That's wonderful. Um, we're we're kind of at the end. So I'm going to kind of throw a little softball to the three of you in terms of, you know, Brad, again, I, I think your initiative is right on point. Um, in the in the upcoming weeks and, and months and, and years, um, how, how do you see it playing out? I mean, I think that you're certainly right on the right track on that, and I think that's the focus. Um, what can we do again to to help help you and help your initiative from a restaurant standpoint or and just general general people? Well. Um, once again, I think, you know, as we move through this and, and like Jimmy says, we will get through it, but as, as we move through it, it's important that we, we maintain um, adherence to safety protocols so that our restaurants can continue to be open at the capacity they are and hopefully start to grow and that our attractions and our hotels can continue to rehire their employees because we know so many employees have lost their jobs in the hotel and hospitality industry. So people have to do their part. I think us in the tourism marketing sphere, you know, we'll continue to keep people inspired to travel and, and help them travel responsibly um, and, and really just help people and market Texas so that we can make sure that Texas is top of mind, that people are keeping Texas in their future travel plans and so that when the time is right for them and when the time is right for all of us, that travel can come back quickly. And that's gonna take um, 
the you know the joint effort of all of us because we're all in this together um, working to promote and market our destinations and and when you know the numbers get better we can start marketing and promoting and bringing texans people to texas again and getting texans traveling thanks brad that and you you, you remind me of something I, and, and i'm glad you did uh you know our 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 hotels brothers and sisters that are that are that are you know struggling just as much as we are in the restaurant industry. Thank you for bringing that up. And you know it, it's going to become like a family. We're going to have to help each other out to get back up and, and and get to where we're going, and then have that. But you're right, tourism. You know, I'm I'm myopic here thinking about restaurants, but it is the the it's the you know it's the hotels, it's the motels, it's you know all the other establishments. So thank thank you for bringing that to the forefront, Councilman Flanagan. How about yourself? How can we help you and, and, and what do you, you know, put on your hat and see what, tell me what you see. Did I, did I mention that I'm on the ballot in November? Um, I'm <laughs> not going to talk about that. I don't think I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we, we need the restaurants to survive. We need you guys to, to stick it out as much as you can. I know Mayor Price has done the same in Fort Worth and many cities have standing up new programs as quickly as we can pull them together. Um, I think one thing y'all could do is lobby your congressmen and your senators. The Senate adjourned without another stimulus. What are we doing? Y'all have a voice, frankly, louder than mine with the congressmen and the senators that represent this state. Yeah. They need to do their jobs. And, and you've already seen that, at, that at the, the federal government doesn't have to answer every question. They just need to open up the pocketbook and let the locals who you know, who you're close with, design the systems and get the money out the door. And, and I know that, that most cities and, and Austin included designed our systems anticipating more stimulus if the pandemic continued. So as much time as it took for some cities to roll the programs out, it won't take that time again. We'll be ready to get the money out the door quickly, but we need the federal government to do it. Cities are not built to sustain pandemics. We are constrained by state government. We are constrained by our budgets. We need the federal government to step up and y'all's voice to your elected officials in DC is absolutely critical. Did you say you were on the ballot, Jimmy? Did you say that? I think I, think I might've mentioned it. Okay. I think I, I might've I just mentioned to make it. Sure. I'm, I'm getting a little older. I told you my birthday was yesterday. I couldn't hear, but thank you. Mayor Price, you have the last word. Tell us, sell us on coming back to, to tourism. You know, I, I'm a big proponent of tourism. For one thing, I love to travel and I'm a foodie and I love good wine. So I'm a big exerciser getting people out only so I can go eat and enjoy a glass of wine every now and then. But I think people really have to rethink. Unfortunately, we're going to see an adjustment in some of our restaurants. Some of them that were holding on by their fingernails are, are maybe not going to make it, or they're going to come up with a slightly different concept or combine with some of the others. But I think overall, those who have worked their business plan, the tourism groups who've worked theirs, who pool their resources and are very innovative and creative are going to see that. My, our bet here is that first and foremost, Texas is a whole nother country. And if all the millions of people within Texas just traveled on a day trip, think what we could do for our economy. There are so many cool places you can go to in a day from your destination where you live. Frequent those local restaurants. The chain restaurants are one thing, but try to frequent those smaller business ones. Try to think about just getting out on a day driving trip. Our zoo is reopened. Our uh, stock show area, stockyards area is open. You've got social distancing. The herd is back in a different experience. You can still see the longhorns, but it's a slightly different. It's a cool new experience with a whole new story. You're just not standing line in the streets watching them. There's just so many creative ways. I'm the eternal optimist. I'm never a glass half full and my glass is always three quarters full or better. We'll get out of this and we will have learned some really valuable lessons from it, made a few adjustments and change never comes easy. But if you're not changing, you're not growing. And I think the travel industry and the tourism and the restaurants are all doing a really good job of sitting back and saying, how can we do this safely? And how can we encourage people to come back out? And government's got to be the leader in saying, we're leading on safety. We're leading on trying to help our small businesses on creating jobs. Now you get out, open your pocketbooks and help us by spending 
taking some day trips and going out and about for dinner and for lunch or for whatever. Now I'm hungry, so I'm thinking it's no, no, no. That, that, that's perfect. And I'd like to say that, you know, for the, the, the restaurant tours, folks, go out and get a, if, you, if you're going to take out, buy a meal for someone else for the next day, a gift card or something. For our restaurant brothers and sisters, I mean, excuse me, our hotel brothers and sisters, uh, you know, get one of those specials. For, now you may not have to go this week or next week, but have it there. But you got to support these folks that are that just trying very hard to do what they can to keep people employed. And that that's what, you know, you hear these stories day after day about, you know, these owners and restaurant owners and hotel owners just trying to keep people employed. And I thank the three of you for taking the time to talk about tourism. Um, it, it, you know, when you hear that word any other day, it's, it's fun, but I know it's been hit kind of hard and, and, and the three of you have done a magnificent job to keep it, you know, the issues to the forefront. Uh, I know you're busy. I thank you for taking this time. We thank you for taking this time and, and, and bless all three of you, okay? Come see us in Fort Worth. We'll do. Brad, Mayor Price. Brad. Jimmy, thank, thank you so much. Have a, have a great time. Thank you. Bye.